Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Community United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. I don't know if you could uh, pay attention to the lyrics of the song they just did for our uh, prelude, but it's, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And so let's think about that this morning as we sing worship to the Lord, that as we worship, we would make a joyful noise to the Lord, that it would be a sweet, sweet sound to the Lord's ear. A couple of announcements for us this morning. Uh, we have a finance committee meeting tomorrow at 1 p.m. So if you are on the finance committee, uh, please be there. We also have our regular um, preparations for food pantry tomorrow morning, uh, food pantry on Wednesday and closed closet on Wednesday as well. So we'd love for you to come and volunteer with us. And even if you've never volunteered with us before, we'd love for you to come and join us. Those are all of our announcements for this morning. Excuse me. Good morning. Let's bow our heads for a minute with our opening prayer. Almighty God, feed our minds with your words, fill our hearts with your grace. Bless each and one of these people here today and their families with your strength and faith. And hear us, O oh God, as we sing. May we lift the rafters and sing to your glory. Amen. Let's stand and turn to hymn number 577 and sing God of grace, God of glory. <clears throat>
to 881 as they recite together the traditional version of the Apostles' Creed. Number 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffering under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, the dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From that he shall come to judge the quick in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. and offerings at this time. Oh, we have a hymn. I'm sorry. Let's turn to page 89. Hymnal, in our hymnal number 89, and sing, joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
please prepare to give up your tithes and offerings.
may be seated. Uh, before we head into our prayer time, I, I thought I'd share something with you this morning. Um, I, I just went up to Ohio for a couple days for a short trip, and while I was there, my, my one grandfather is not doing well, and, and I can't help but wonder if that's the last time I, I will see him. And I share that not to say feel bad for me or anything like that, but just to remind us all, we don't know what people are going through when they come through these doors. How many other people have got diagnosis these week, this week are going through a struggle. And so as we enter into this prayer time, it's our time to hold one another up to the Lord, to pray for those people who are going through difficult times, to pray for those who are struggling. And I just want to remind us that we're not doing this just to go out of, through the motions, but as we enter into this prayer time together, that we would lift those up to the Lord who we are struggling, who are struggling, who are going through difficult times. And I want to remind you, even if I don't mention something in the prayer that pertains to you, feel free to use this as a time to pray on your own and say, Lord, this person's come into mind. Bring healing to them. Move in this person's life. So I just thought I'd share that as we enter into this prayer time together. Let us pray this morning. Gracious God, we thank you for the reminder in the special music we just heard that you are a good, good father. That you are a wonderful parent. That you pour out your riches on us. That everything we have is a blessing from you. That you are our great provider. And so Lord, we ask this morning that we would recognize you for all of your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your grace and your love and your mercy. We ask this morning as we give this offering back to you, that you would bless it, that you would use it for your glory, that this would not just be something we do out of obedience, though that is wonderful, but that we would give joyfully as we sang about joyful, joyful in a previous hymn this morning, that we would give to you and that you would take this offering and bless it and use it for your glory that through this offering, ministries and missions would be funded so that more and more people could come to know of your great love for them. And Lord, we come to you this morning lifting up to you all those who are struggling, those with loved ones with cancer diagnoses, those with loved ones who are nearing maybe the ending of their lives those with loved ones or maybe they themselves who are going through divorce or unemployment or eviction, whatever it may be. We lift up to you this morning and we hold those people in our minds, those who are struggling, relatives or friends, whoever it may be. We lift them before you, Lord, and we say them by name in our mind this morning and ask that you would bless them Bring them healing, if not physical in this life, spiritual and emotional healing. We ask that you would move and pour out your goodness on all of us. We pray that those who are struggling, ourselves included, would feel you near to us in a real and special way. That we would feel your presence, that you would not feel like a distant God, but that you would feel like a heavenly parent embracing us in the warmest hug we have ever felt. Lord, move in our lives. Lord, we also lift up to you those this morning who are joyful, those who are celebrating things like births of children and grandchildren, new jobs, new horizons, new homes, whatever it may be. We thank you that we are a people who can grieve together but also celebrate. And so we celebrate the wonderful things that you are doing among us. Lord, help us to be a people who comfort one another and also celebrate with one another. Help us to be the body of Christ, lifting one another up to your presence. Lord, we pray for your blessing on this church, that we would be a church who continues to shine your light into this community that we would be a church that when people see our church, they would say, that is the church that is full of God's love, full of God's grace, full of God's mercy. That is the church that clothes people. That is the church that feeds people. That is the church that feeds not only people's bellies, but feeds people's souls with the goodness and kindness and love of God. 
Lord, we ask your forgiveness where we have failed to be this church. We ask your forgiveness for ways in which we have maybe failed to be people who live the way you call us to live. We ask for your forgiveness when we have failed to love others as ourselves, when we have said unkind things. We ask that you would forgive us, Lord. But Lord, we acknowledge that you are bigger than just this church, that you are the God of the world and the universe. And so we pray for our world. We lift up to you, especially this morning, <clears throat> those on the island of Maui who have lost everything, their homes, their livelihoods, friends and family members. We ask that you would comfort them. We ask that you would strengthen them. <clears throat> we ask that you would show us how to be the body of Christ, lifting them up to you, how we can help from thousands of miles away. Show us how to be the body of Christ. We pray for those in the world who are experiencing war and injustice. We pray for your peace. We pray, Lord, for those experiencing famine. We pray for you to rain down food. Lord, we lift up our world to you. And we pray for peace and justice and goodness and kindness and love and grace and mercy to prevail. And now, Lord, we join together in praying the words that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 62, and we're going to be singing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. So all creatures of our God and King, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5.
If you were here last week, we began a series on the book of Ruth. Ruth is one of only two books in the Bible, Ruth and Esther, that are named after women. And so I guess it makes sense for the female preacher to preach on two women. So let us hear the the words of the Lord this week. We're in Ruth chapter 2. Would you hear the word of the Lord? Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered a field, and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. And then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, who does that young woman belong to? The overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of her husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people who you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men. Let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from beyond from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I work with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead, she added. That man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It will be good for you, my daughter, to go with the women who work for him, because in someone else's field you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the women of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvest were finished, and she lived with her mother-in-law. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word which has been given to us this day. We ask that you would speak to us not just to our ears, but to our hearts. That you would transform us into the people you have called us to be. Lord, I ask that this word I have prepared would not just be my own, but would be from you. Use me as a vessel. May your Holy Spirit flow through me. Amen. So since becoming parents a little over four years ago, uh, Jesse and I, my husband Jesse and I, have enjoyed coming up with various traditions for our children. And one of them is that we try to go every May, usually blueberry picking. 
Um, it's usually around Mother's Day. It's something Jesse would do with his family as a kid, and so we've continued it on with our girls. And sometimes we have gone and the blueberries are overflowing. It's so easy to find them. And other times we have gone and you are uh, getting all the leftovers. Everyone has picked them over. You're reaching down low or reaching up high. Usually it ends up I'm the only one picking them and Jesse and the girls seem to be eating everything that I have picked. But at least for us, this is just a fun family activity, a way to get outside with the girls. We usually end up baking some desserts after maybe a blueberry pie or blueberry muffins. It's not like we are dependent on what we pick for our food source. We can go to the store, we are blessed. But in this time of the Book of Ruth and even places all around the world today, getting food out in the garden or in a farm is not just a fun activity. It's a way people provide for themselves and their families. It is their entire food source. Remember last week we began this series with Ruth. And remember just a little bit about these two women. Naomi is an Israelite. And Ruth is her daughter-in-law, a Moabite, a foreigner from another land. Naomi has lost her two sons and her husband. She is bitter. She tells her daughter-in-laws to go and leave, go back to their homelands. But Ruth stays with Naomi. She is faithful to her mother-in-law. She shows her kindness, and they travel back to Judah together. And so our text picks up today with chapter 2. And in today's scripture, Ruth and Naomi have come to Judah. And for Naomi, it's this homecoming. She has been gone for 10 years. She is welcomed home. But Ruth is this foreigner. She is this Moabite. She is also a widow trying to be faithful and helpful to her mother-in-law who has lost everyone. And now, especially for that time period, they have no man to depend on. Ruth is out in the fields gleaning. Gleaning is this practice of going to the fields and not getting the first pick of the crop, but getting the leftovers. Like me picking the blueberries, the ones maybe down at the bottom or crouched, crouched down at the bottom or up high in the tree. She is the one getting whatever is left over. And I know many people, when they think of the Old Testament, they don't think of God as merciful and kind. There's kind of this picture of God is mean in the Old Testament. God is kind and loving in the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, we see God's kindness and grace and love and mercy there as well. In the Old Testament, the Israelites were commanded to care for the foreigners and the poor. Leviticus, I know that's not a book we read very often, but Leviticus 19, 9 through 10 commands the Israelites saying, When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am the Lord your God. God makes it clear that the Israelites were to leave some behind for the poor and the foreigner. The Old Testament shows us a kind and compassionate God as well. It is clear that God cares for the poor and the oppressed and the foreigners. Now, I've served here about a year now, a little over a year, and I'm continually amazed by the great ministry of our food pantry and clothes closet. We are serving about 200 households every week, sometimes even more at the food pantry and usually 60 some at the clothes closet. We were recently told a few months back by the health department that they believed we were the largest food pantry in Volusia County. And I'm especially thankful for the grocery stores that give us free food. It's that food that's about to go uh, bad soon, but not bad yet, that instead of throwing away or selling to people, they give it to us. And in a way, I think in our culture and day in society, this is a picture of gleaning, leaving the leftovers behind for the poor and foreigner, like scripture tells us. And so in today's text, Ruth is gleaning in the fields and she comes across this man named Boaz. He is a relative of Naomi's deceased husband, and he also happens to own the fields where Ruth is gleaning. Boaz notices the young woman and asks about her. And he learns that she is a Moabite woman who has come back with Naomi. And she has been working in the fields, harvesting all day. And remember, for the Israelites, Moabite people would not have been embraced. They were not looked on well. Uh, They did not have a good relationship with the Israelites. 
But Boaz shows this foreign woman kindness. He tells her not to go to the other fields where she could be put in danger, but to stay here. And he will tell his men to not lay a hand on her. Ruth is surprised that Boaz would show her kindness. After all, he doesn't even know Ruth. She is a foreigner, a Moabite. She even asks, why would you show kindness to me? And Boaz responds that he has heard about the kindness and faithfulness she has shown to her mother-in-law. Boaz has heard about how Ruth left her homeland to stay with Naomi. And he hopes the Lord repays her for the good she has done. You see, when we show kindness to someone else, as Ruth has shown kindness to Naomi, people take notice. People see that and see there is something different about that person. And sometimes, if it's someone like Boaz, people will show that kindness to us in response as well. Later, Ruth tells Naomi about Boaz, and Naomi tells Ruth that Boaz is a distant relative, a guardian redeemer. This is someone who is supposed to redeem a relative in the family, someone in serious difficulty. People like Naomi and Ruth, widows who have lost so much and don't have a man to depend on to care for them. We'll dig into this concept next week more in chapter 3 about guardian redeemer and what it means for Jesus to be our redeemer. But in today's scripture, Ruth is shown kindness from Boaz. Boaz represents our God who has shown great kindness to us. Boaz is a reminder that our God watches out for us. He cares for us. He protects us and shows us kindness, just as Boaz showed to Ruth. And if we think Ruth is kind to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and, and Boaz is kind to Ruth, how much more so is our God kind to us? How have you in your life experienced the kindness of God? Maybe it was by receiving forgiveness from God when you didn't deserve it. Maybe you experienced the kindness of God when God provided for you and answered a prayer. Have you experienced the kindness of God by God putting people in your life to care for you, like Ruth cared for Naomi and Boaz cared for Ruth? I'm guessing and hoping we can all come up with at least one example where we have experienced the kindness of God. We live in a world where people are gleaning and searching for kindness. They are searching to be shown kindness, even if it's only the leftovers, like Ruth getting the leftovers in the field. People are hungry and desperate to be shown kindness. However, we don't always live in a kind world. Kindness can be difficult to find, especially in our climate, especially with political division. Sometimes people have to go through many hurdles, a lot of unkind people, before they find someone who shows them kindness. And because kindness can be difficult to find, I think we always especially notice when someone shows you kindness. This week, as I mentioned earlier, I went on a quick three-night trip to Ohio, just me and the girls. And if you've never traveled by yourself with a two- and four-year-old, you don't even know what kind of chaos I experienced. But we left on Wednesday and got back yesterday afternoon. And if you've ever traveled with little ones, you know how difficult it can be. Thankfully, since we were only going to be gone three nights, I was able to pack just two backpacks, one for myself and one for them. However, although that's light on luggage, here's the big problem with a two and four year old, car seats. So I get into Ohio, I go to the luggage to get, I've got a backpack on a back, one on my front, a car seat in each hand, and I'm directing the girls where to go. But thankfully, a man sees me and says, can I help you? Can I carry something for you? And I was not too proud to say, yes, please take a car seat. And these last few days, I have not forgotten that simple, kind act of kindness. That random act of kindness helping a struggling mother in an airport with two little kids. He even followed me down an escalator the wrong way and back up again and, and joked about how he was sure the kids were loving the escalator rides. But we got out and made it where we were waiting to be picked up. I will keep remembering that act of kindness. This is just one tiny, tiny little example 
And we often see stories of kindness when we watch the news and hear stories after natural disasters. This week, sadly, the news has been filled with stories in Maui of wildfires. And I was reading, it's probably the worst wildfire to affect our country in over a hundred years. And while the devastation is absolutely horrific, I have been amazed by the stories of kindness I've read about in the aftermath. One was an 88-year-old woman, and I believe it was her daughter, who stayed in the ocean for seven or eight hours, and her daughter and another man helping the 88-year-old woman to stay in the water to avoid the fires. That was kindness, showing and caring for that woman. I heard another story of how the roads were closed down and people all on their own, just citizens, not the government, started bringing in their boats to rescue people, to bring people supplies. That is kindness. This is the kindness of God. These acts of kindness will be remembered for years and years to come by those people who were shown kindness. We love hearing these stories of kindness in the news when we see others showing kindness, but we should be asking ourselves, how am I doing personally at showing kindness to others? How am I doing at showing kindness to the, to the poor and the foreigner? How am I doing at showing kindness to the person different from myself? When we look to the New Testament, we see kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. And so as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to become more and more and more like Christ. And one of the things that is involved there is becoming more and more kind. If we aren't becoming more kind when we follow Jesus, when we ourselves have experienced the kindness of God, then there's a problem there. Jesus came not just to keep us as we are, but Jesus came to transform us. This includes how we treat one another. This includes showing kindness. This week, we had a volunteer training led by Lisa DeGrenia, the pastor at community, not community, I keep saying community, Coronado United Methodist in New Smyrna. And one of the things she mentioned are there are these different values or aspects everyone wants to experience no matter who they are. And I've probably forgotten some of them, but the ones that stood out to me were the number one is she said, people want to feel like they belong. People want to feel like they belong. People want to feel safe, that they are safe. People want to feel like they have a purpose and a significance. And so we as a church should be asking ourselves, how are we doing as volunteers at making people feel safe? How are we doing at making people feel like they belong? How are we making people feel like they have a purpose and significance? Not just the volunteers, not just the people we are serving coming in, but how do we show this to our volunteers we serve alongside as well? In today's scripture, we see Boaz do just this for Ruth. He makes her feel like she belongs even though she is a foreigner. He notices her. He says, stay in this field and my men will not lay a hand on you. He is making her to feel safe. He gives her a purpose and shows that she is significant by saying how he has heard about how she cares for her mother-in-law. We as Christ followers should be doing this to others as well. We should make all people who enter through our doors feel safe, like they belong, that they have purpose and significance. Simply put, we should show others kindness. As a mom to two little girls who are fighting a lot lately, I find myself often saying, be kind to one another. And that's not just true for two and four year olds, but adults as well, be kind, be kind to one another. As we work and serve as volunteers, whether it's the food pantry, the clothes closet, whatever ministry it may be, we should be people making others feel like they belong, that they are safe and have a purpose. We should be kind. And this isn't true just on Mondays or Wednesdays or Sundays, whatever day we serve. As Christians, this should be all the days of our life, Monday through Saturday as well. We should be showing people the kindness of God. Now I know this is just a fact of life. Some people are easier to be kind to than others. It's easy, I think, to show kindness to the mom struggling with two little cute little girls at the airport. But kindness doesn't always come easy. Sometimes it be, can be difficult to show kindness, especially in difficult situations with difficult people. 
It can be difficult to show kindness to the person different from us. The person foreign from us, like Ruth, is a foreigner to the Israelites. And, and when I say that word, I'm not just talking about someone from another country, but anyone who's different from us. Anyone who thinks or acts differently from us, it can be difficult to show them kindness. And we are to search deep within ourselves and look for that speck of kindness within us. Just like Ruth gleaning the fields for leftover grain, sometimes we may have to glean and search for kindness deep within us to be kind to the people who are most difficult to be kind to. How will you glean for kindness within yourself so that you can show kindness to others, others who are desperately searching and gleaning to be shown kindness? Now, I won't lie, kindness involves work, work on our own part, and it is truly a work of the Holy Spirit. We recently, if you can remember that far back, did a series on Wesley and talked about sanctification, this this process of becoming more and more and more like Jesus Christ. And becoming more like Christ involves becoming more and more kind. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. And so I invite us this morning to examine our hearts. And if we realize, Lord, I'm really struggling to be kind, or maybe there are especially certain people I struggle to be kind toward, just simply pray about it. Ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for not showing kindness. Ask for the Holy Spirit to make us more kind, more loving people. Ask for us to better welcome others, embrace others, even the foreigner like Ruth. Let us be kind as Christ has been kind to us. Let us pray and ask that the Holy Spirit would transform us into kinder people, people who look out for others, who make them feel seen and heard, who make them feel safe, significant, and like they have purpose. You see, when we show kindness toward others, it's an opportunity for others to learn about the kindness of our God. I know a lot of us maybe have trouble sometimes with evangelism and say, I don't know how to share about my faith. Sometimes it's as simple as being kind. And people will ask, why are you doing this for me? A month or so back, I helped someone to get some medication from the pharmacy. And they asked, why are you doing this? Why are you being so kind to me? And I said, because it's what God would want me to do. God would want me to show kindness. God would want me to show love. And if this happens to be getting you medicine that shows you God's love, then that is what I will do. Does anyone remember, I think it was maybe 20 so years ago or now, now maybe 20 years ago, the, the big concept would, was what would Jesus do? Remember that? People would even wear the, the wristbands with the WWJD, what would Jesus do? And I know this phrase isn't as popular anymore. But it's still the truth. As we live our lives, we should be asking ourselves, what would Jesus do in this situation? I believe in most every situation, Jesus would be kind. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean always giving money away. It doesn't mean always buying someone something. But we are always called to be kind in our interactions. We are always called to speak kindly, speak lovingly, make people feel heard and valued. We are always called to treat people as persons of worth made in the image of God. We live in a world that is hungry for kindness, so much so that people are even suspicious sometimes when you show kindness. People may ask, why are you being so nice to me? But let us be people that are so kind because our God is so kind. Let us be people that when we show kindness, people are surprised and can't help but wonder why. And we point them to the kindness of our God. Remember, our God was the one who was first kind to us. Our God loved us before we ever loved him in return. So let us show that kindness of God to all we encounter. And for those of you here today who are maybe struggling yourselves to receive kindness, for those of you here who have maybe been hurt by the world, hurt by the big church in general, or maybe even hurt by this specific church, for those of you who have not received kindness, I am deeply sorry. May you know that you are a person of worth created in the image of God. May you experience the kindness of God today. May you experience the love of God today. May you know that God sees you just as you are, 
just as Boaz saw Ruth in the fields. God loves you and God has not forgotten about you. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit and know that you are loved by the creator of the universe. May we all this day experience a fresh outpouring of the kindness of God. And in return, may we not hold on to that kindness for ourselves, but may we share that kindness with the world, with a desperate, hungry, and hurting world out searching and gleaning for the tiniest bit of kindness they can find. May we show others kindness. May we show the foreigner and the poor kindness. May we show kindness of God to all people so that all may come to know the kindness and love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that before we loved you, you loved us. We thank you that you are a God who has poured out your kindness on us. And so ask, we ask, Lord, this day that we would not just receive your kindness for ourselves, but that we would bless others. As Ruth showed kindness to Naomi, as Boaz noticed Ruth in the fields and showed kindness to her, may we too show kindness and compassion to all we meet. And as we do so, may we not do it for ourselves to glorify ourselves, but may we show others kindness to glorify you and to point to the love and kindness of you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when we have not been kind. Fill us with the fruit of the spirit of kindness and help us to be kind to all we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of response is hymn number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth. Would you stand as we sing this together?
I give the blessing, just want to say we're going to do something a little different today. And I know anytime there's change, people freak out, but we can handle this. When I give the benediction, we are going to go straight into the postlude. And no, singing a song just goes straight into the postlude. So would you hear this blessing? May you receive the kindness of God, and may you pour that kindness out to all people you meet. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.